everybody. It's laundry day here on Flickr, um, but that's just as well, because as we keep working our way through the Sermon on the Mount, um, maybe it's time for us to have a conversation about laundry, or why it's not worth planning out your outfits too, too far in advance. At least that, that's the lesson I've been learning lately. Um, throughout the months that we've been living through this whole pandemic thing, I have found that it is awfully very, very difficult to know what the day, certainly the week, is going to bring. Some days lately it feels like you make plans at the start of the day, and what you thought was solid and certain at the start of the day is completely up in the air, from what schools are going to look like, to um, what our plans for church and worship are like, to what you can do or where you can go, what restaurants are open and where you can go to the store, all those things, they seem like they're constantly changing these days. And it's, it's taught me, at least for this time we've been living in, that it's not worth it for me to try and make a, a, a real rigid plan for how my whole week is going to go. I, I think there was a time in my life, early on in at least my life of ministry, when I assumed the start of the week, I can plan out exactly how everything's going to go. I'm going to need my, you know, pastor clergy shirt for Sunday. Oh, but then on this day I'm going to be working out uh, outside on my day off, so I'm going to need to have this other uh, you know, work clothes for that day. And then I, I, I could plan it all out and assume that the world <laughs> was going to go the way I wanted it to go. It wasn't too long before I realized that's, that's not how life works. And, and at least if you're going to live your life in light of the priorities of the reign of God, which means being available to love neighbors, I've got to be able to be flexible. And sometimes plan A was, this is the shirt for the day, and sorry, turns out this is going to be the one I'm going to need to wear anyway. Or the other way around. There are times in my ministry life, at least, where it was supposed to be a day off, but somebody's taken to the emergency room and they need me to be there. And so, you know what? I don't get to say, sorry, can you reschedule your emergency? Sometimes things have to be set aside and you make new plans and you make a change of wardrobe because that's what the day or the need requires. And other times the flip side happens. There are days when I think, nope, it's going to be a busy, busy work day and things turn out that I'm able to take a breather early on and put on relaxing clothes and maybe enjoy a leisurely stroll outside or get to play with my kids in a moment I wasn't expecting. In a way, all of our lives are like this, but we sometimes get so hung up on needing to have everything planned and set and figured, and we get more upset when the plan changes than at being able to be there for the people who need us that make us need to change those plans in the first place. So Jesus says at the end of what we call Matthew chapter 6, so this is coming to, toward the end of the second chapter of stuff that we call the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, so don't worry about tomorrow. Let tomorrow take care of itself. When we get to tomorrow, you can get to worry about to tomorrow. But today is enough trouble for itself. Now, it's possible to hear that and to assume Jesus is making that into another ironclad rule and to say you're not allowed to think at all about what's going to happen tomorrow. You're not allowed to buy your groceries a week in advance. You're not allowed to plan uh, your vacation. You're not allowed to plan projects. No, that's not really what it is. But it does mean a different kind of ordering of priorities. Sometimes we get so, so focused on here's the plan, this is what it has to be, and we sort of sketch out, maybe, maybe more than sketch, we write out in permanent marker, this is what I'll do not only today, but this week and next month, and then the third quarter uh, profits reports will look like this, and then I'll get that promotion, I'll climb up the ladder and do this and this and this and this and this. And I'm sorry, but life sometimes gets in the way. And when we are forced to choose, either to change plans, because somebody has the need for us to show up for them, or because just life throws us one of those curveballs, or I know I must stick to the plan at all costs, Jesus says, look, let, let, let tomorrow be our worry when we get to tomorrow, but today, where do I need to be right now? It's about being present right here in this moment. And if, and if where I need to be in this moment changes what I would have planned for tomorrow, fine. When we get to tomorrow, we'll get there. After all, I'm not guaranteed that I get it tomorrow. Today is the day I've been given. Today is a gift of grace. And instead of assuming I've earned tomorrow and the things that I want to have happen, I'll make happen. No, Jesus says be present right here and now. So yeah, go ahead and make your um, grocery list to plan a week's worth of meals in your shopping trip. That's fine. Go ahead, make plans or thoughts about what you'll do next year or next week or next month in your work life or in your family life, whatever. Fine. But always with the asterisk. This is the moment I've been given. 
And if something in this moment means I have to change plans, and I've been planning on wearing this shirt, but sorry, life means I have to wear this shirt now, I, okay, that's fine. Allow this moment to tell you where you need to be now. Who are the people you need to spend your time and your love and your energy on now? And when we get to tomorrow, we'll get to tomorrow. But for now, I can show up and be fully present. So much of our lives these days feels like we are busy looking ahead to other times when things will be different, things will be better, when I'll have more money, when I'll have that different job. And we end up missing out on being fully present right here, right now. So maybe that's the challenge for us right now. Figure out where you need to be now. And not just what's the most fun thing to do, but where does God need you to be right now? Where is God calling you? Who are the people you are called to love in this moment? And when I'm focused on how can I love rightly in this moment, it has a way of giving clarity for the step in front of me. Sometimes that's all we get is enough light for the next step in front of you. And when you take that step, then you take the one after that and the one after that. I invite you, Jesus invites us, to be mindful about where you need to be right now and to let that be enough of our worries for today. And join us in the new week then, and we'll figure out all sorts of new adventures where Jesus leads us here on Flickr.